Today's video, we're going to give you a complete guide on how to render wall with sand cement. We'll show you how to fix the corner beads, how to get the perfect mix, show you how to apply the scratch coat, which is the base coat, how to apply the top coat, and the exact steps you need to follow to get the perfect finish. Uh, so we'll show you all that in today's masterclass. Okay, this is what we're working on. It's just a raised patio to the house. Got the wall coming through. Got some steps. They're going up to the raise. It comes up and around. It goes around there. And falls all the way through. So we've got some steps to work around. Got a nice length of wall. So we've got some beads to put. So yeah, we've got quite a lot to do here. Quite a fun little project. We've got the mix on. We'll talk about the mix in a minute and how to do it. But for now, let's whack some beads on and get some render on. First bit of advice is I'd use these pins. They are. These are masonry pins, designed just with block work, mortar, and it's so much easier to use these pins when you're using beads. Uh, I've seen so many people just use standard clout nails and it's just a pain in the ass. These are a lot easier to work with and allow you to get your fixing points in straight away rather than keep chucking out. Designed for mortar, brickwork, block work. They will even go into blocks if you push hard enough. So first bit of advice on fixing beads is these bad boys after that it's fairly simple just make sure you stick to your level there's no bows or dips just make sure your bead runs right across that level so let's have a little look so obviously 1.8 meter straight edge it's a level there um you just offer the bead up and you see check it for plumb first so what i always do for whacking your nails in is just suss it out where the bead's sitting this block wall was actually okay so just lay the bead up to the wall and using the masonry pins, I typically go into the mortar. Um, if your mortar is gentle, you can actually go into the block with these pins. They are magical things. So you want to lay it up plumb to the left and to the right side of the bead. You want to plumb it both ways to make sure it's straight. And other than that, there's nothing really to it. You run it through, there's a slight gap there. So what you want to do is pull the bead in and then get a fix in to the right side there. So that's what you want to look out for. You can see a bit of sunlight through the bead. Pull it in, and that's where you fix it. You want it to be completely straight. So we've got the mix, four to one. All we're doing now is working to the bead. We want to cover half the bead, get half the thickness, and then we'll be sorted. So you just literally run up the bead, run up to what you've already rendered. And at this stage, you have to worry too much about it getting it so flat. It's just a scratch coat. The important thing is just to get it covered. But also is to make sure we're going to flatten because some of the block work is a bit, it's not the best. So we're just going to try and get it flat from the scratch and then carry on from there. But at this point, we're just chucking it on. into what you've already done before. We're up to the top. The big thing with applying render is just lots of pressure. Tucking it in tight. Lots of pressure and an even mix. We'll show you the mix in a minute, but you don't want it to be too stiff. You want a bit of moisture in there so it'll grip to the block. And you've got something to play with as well. Again, cover your beads. Yeah. 
In terms of prep before rendering, we've had a lot of rain before this, so the blocks are well moistened up. We don't really need to put any additives on the block, anything. You just render directly onto these. So in terms of the prep before rendering, there's nothing needed. Maybe a splash of water if it's dry, but generally not much at all, just throw it on. Once we've got to a point, what I like to do is rule the scratch coat and that's because the block work can sometimes be a bit, a bit iffy, it's not always perfect. So if we rule the scratch, it's just going to make it so much easier for when we do the top coat. So I've got a decent amount on, just going to give it a quick rule, nothing special, just... any high spots generally get it flatter i might fill in the centers we'll see but after that give it a scratch you're left with a nice flat scratch section ready for the top coat give it a bit of time i'll probably get another length ahead of me and then we'll scratch it together Well, mix gone <laughs> it doesn't go very far does it you mix in the render it doesn't go far at all so i'm going to get some um get some sand start loading up and i'm going to show you exactly how to do the mixes over there and then we're going to talk about span an interesting point in rendering what everyone should know so let's go for it okay so we've got the mixer got the mixer we've got about three quarters uh bucket of water in there already what you want to do is add the mix slowly because the mix is going to do its thing it's going to crunch it up so the scratch coat is four to one for me it's always four to one i've also added 250 milliliters of this is integral waterproofers it's from everbuild it's the only one i use it's great stuff it makes the mix nice and creamy it makes it easy to use so 250 milliliters of this then we've got four parts sand one cement and I just measure it in bucket, so just throw it in. And like that. So what I do is put two buckets in. Two buckets in there. What I'll do is I'll add the water slowly. So you can gauge exactly how it's going. It's so easy when you're mixing render to add too much water or it's too dry. So I'm gonna let us do its thing and get another two buckets of sand and I'm gonna carry on. Okay, whilst that's mixing, what I've done is I've gone back to the wall where I've applied render and I've scratched it. So this is a scarifier. This is a tool which is basically four long pieces of metal and all you do is you just apply the scratch yourself. So this is called a mechanical key and that's because you're applying 
some grooves into the render so then when you apply your top coat it's got something to bind to. If you didn't do this the top coat would just fall off. So you don't want to do it when the render's soaking wet. Um, so what you want is you want to give it a tiny, you want to give it some time to take up and then that's when you scratch the render. So if you're looking for a tool it's just a scarifier, this is not a hard process. All you need to know is don't go too deep with the render, just give it a nice key and run it all the way through to the top coat so something to grip to. As you can see it looks very very runny at the moment but it turns so fast. So just going to add one bucket at a time from now on and just see how it goes from there. Check it out, give it a bit of time to stir it and see if it's too dry a bit of water, vice versa. So let's do that now. Turn up for a minute. One thing is I'm using plastering sand. I won't use any other sand for rendering. This is Sandgate plastering sand. It's good stuff. And the thing with mix is to make sure you always keep the same consistency. If you're gauging it by buckets, make sure you use the same buckets every time. Make sure you fill it up to the same level. So when it starts coming to the top coat, it needs to be a different mix. So you need to make sure the mix is consistently the same. That is a big thing. So a bit of water will myself a bit. Throw the last bucket in. And we'll see how it's looking. You just want to add little dribbles of water at a time because it's so easy to think it's really dry, throw a load in and it'll be sopping wet. So the thing with mix and render, just little bits of water at a time. Mix to do its thing. Just little bits at a time. Don't overload it with water. It'll just flood it otherwise. So just little drags. And there's no way of gauging it with rendering. Because the sand's been out, it's either really dry or really wet. So I can't say it's one bucket per mix. It doesn't work like that. Just got to do it incrementally. See, I'm just adding little bits at a time. Get in there now. I'll let you know it's bang on. So we're gonna leave it mixing for a little bit. Don't keep adding water, let it take its time now. Let it mix up what it's got. There's gonna be a bit of moisture at the back. Let it use that up. I'm gonna whack a few beads on and come back. To me, it looks pretty good. But again, I'm just gonna leave it for about five, 10 minutes. Let it mix up. I've got some other bits to do in the meantime. And then we'll come back and see how it's looking. Okay, so anything with a long length needs to be split. For example, this wall here, this section is 4.8 meters long. This one's about 3.2. Anything over six meters needs to be split. So you need to have an expansion, which basically means you've got a break in the render. This allows movement and it stops it from cracking. If you had one big sheet of render, it cracks somewhere along the line. So you need to split it. Um, so usually if I've got a long wall with nothing to think about, I'll just split it down the centre. Again, as long as it's before the six metre mark, I'll just split it there. But here, we've got a point where the two walls meet. So that is a solid join. Now that, if I just rendered through, would crack. I could use EML, a strip of EML, to plant it over there. But... That is also the corner of the building. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to split my render there. I'm going to put an expansion joint in that position. So then at least we've got, it runs in line with the corner. We've got that wall and then we've got this separated. So you kind of want to be thinking about these things when you are doing it. But I want to show you a little something special. This is an expansion bead. It's all done for you. You've got a break in the middle. You've got a little rubber joint which allows it to move. So if the render does move, the walls move, you've got a little bit of movement and play there. What I'm gonna do is render up to either side of this and plant it right on that join. Again, it runs in line with the cladding. So I want it to stop just where the cladding comes down. So then by the eye, we've got a nice position where it meets up. Um, so it'll come with this cladding and then the corner will just run outside of it. Ideally, I would have wanted it to run in line with that corner, but I'm gonna kill two birds with one stone. I'm gonna 
and sure we're covering this joint so there's nothing cracked and i'm also going to create an expansion for the wall so what you do is these only come in 10 millimeters well as far as i know which but it's handy anyway what i'm going to do is create a render either side of that i'm not going to bridge a gap otherwise that isn't bridged and basically you've still got the the potential of the underside cracking but i'm not going to bridge it i'm going to put the render on and then plant it on and then using my level making sure it's straight and plumb on the wall so that is the next point now quick tip left the mix for a bit just look you didn't put any more water in because that is what it's come to to be honest that is quite a good mix i must say it's creamed up all the moisture's come to the front, it's mixed in nicely, there's no clumps at the back. But that's the idea, just slowly add water to the mix rather than big dots at a time, because you will get in trouble. So I'm going to pour that out, I'm going to start working on the risers. just got one bead it's no filling after you've done it if you had two stop beads you'd have to fill the center with silicon or if it was one strip of render you'd have to cut it back you just fix one bead that's it and i think they look pretty good as well it's a nice neat, nice neat finish something to work to i think they're really good so now i'm just going to carry on that length easy peasy get this done and we'll start going around to the front to the steps Okay, so we're back. It's been about a week. We've had bad weather here, bad storms. Storms in England and all sorts, so I've had to pull off and get some plastering done. But it's a lovely day now, look at that. Glorious. So, this is a scratch, it's obviously dried up nicely. There is one thing we have to do, and I've got this. This is a pressure sprayer, it's all pumped up. And what we need to do is hydrate the walls. Before you start rendering, you need to get some a nice drench and a nice coating of water onto the scratch coat. Otherwise, when you apply your top coat, it'll just pull in and it'll just suck the life out of the render. So, nice little spray. If you've got a hose, that'd be even better. I've just got the pressure wash for now. We don't want to drench it, so you don't want to full on tap it down. The sun's out, you know. With, a nice temperature um, and we've got a bit of wind so all these factors will help for the render to pull in so I'm putting a nice layer of application of water on moving across we want that all through that throughout and once that whole wall's done what you want to do is come back to see how that section is pulling in if that's pulling and it's gone back to as if it was back to the dry state of the render as we're seeing it now then we need to add more water but what you don't want is to absolutely drench it you put your top coat on and it kind of it slides off it needs a bit of moisture but at the same time you don't want too much so i'm going to do this throughout i'm going to do this throughout the whole wall and again if this has gone dry i'll just add another application of water but i think at this moment in time i've had a lot of rain um I think it should be fine with just one one spray across so that's the first tip okay so the wall is well hydrated we've put a nice level of moisture on there now we can start applying the render now the big difference from the top coat to the scratch is the mix at this time it's five sand one cement and one hydrated lime now the hydrated lime is something we add to the top coat this gives the, the mix a bit of body makes it a bit creamier so when we go into the later stages it's a bit easier to get that nice finish with We'll talk about that in a bit. I also have the mix thicker. So the first scratch coat for me, the mix is a bit runnier. I like that because the blocks, 
they haven't got much of a key so it, it, you need a bit of moisture so it can grip to the block work there in the first place and it's a bit easier to apply but for the top I like it a bit thicker because we've already got the scratch in there and we also want the render to dry if it's too wet it'll just take ages to dry so what we're going to do is the exact same I'm not going to go too far into this because we've done it but see the mix has got a bit of body to it this time it's a bit creamier um, and the lime definitely gives it a bit of thickness it makes it a bit easier to apply and it holds itself this time we're working to the bead you want to try and get to the bead and try and get your thickness as accurate as you can as possible because when it comes to ruling we're not taking too much off but i like to have a tiny bit more on the bead a bit more thickness when we're ruling we don't have to keep putting more render on um, and in rendering you always work right to left and that's because when you're applying the render you apply it into itself so to the bead And it grips nicely to that scratch, it's lovely. For me, I really like applying the top coat. It's a lot nicer. Work into that bead, there's your good thickness, that's what you're governed by. Other than the mix, everything else is the exact same. So what I'm going to do is I don't want to waste your time and go through this again. Quickly run through it, get a patch on and then we'll start ruling. But it's slightly different for the top coat for the ruling. So I'm going to get a section on, rule it and talk about it from there. Okay, with a ruling, you've got to be a lot more precise with the top coat. So I'm going to be following from the right, what I've already ruled off. What we're doing, we're going to go horizontally first. So horizontally till it's flat sideways and then we also check it vertically. Check it one more time. There's a few stones in the mix. Now what we're doing now is looking for any low spots. Is there an area where the render isn't quite caught? We've got to fill in the low spots and then rule it again. And don't be scared to add a bit of thickness. You don't be precise for just putting the render on in the low spots you see. Then we reel it straight away.
that's it. What I will say about the ruling is just take your time. This is probably, in my eyes, the most important stage for getting your walls flat. So make sure you're working it vertically as well as horizontally and just try your best to get it flat. So as you can see, we've got a nice, nice flat wall running ahead of us. So in the later stages, it's gonna be so much easier. We haven't got that much thickness. We've put most of the thickness on with a scratch. Um, so you don't have to worry about that. You just take your time. And do your best to get it flat because it's very important at this stage to work with the rule which is why i recommend practicing first with a scratch coat so you can get hang of it and then when it comes to the top coat you're a bit better at doing it okay so that's top coat on on that section i just want to quickly show you and you literally just finish it to this bead. So in the centre is where your break is. Just clean it off. And that is your guide. That's why it's so important that I got it plumb both sides. But you literally just finish it to that. That's ruled in. Same in the centre. There's your break. And that's your wall. From bead, in a sense, bead to bead. So yeah. Got a cool bit of kit, finishing on the corner there, and that's that. So now we want to wait for this to dry, and now I'll tell you the signs of when to get it right. But we're waiting for this to dry, and I've got to let that take up, let the oxygen get to the cement render. We've opened it up, um, and then when we're going to get to a later point, we're going to do a thing called floating, and that's when we start finishing the product. So I'm going to give it some time, get another mix on, get that section on, maybe some bits over there. And then we'll come back to it. So I was going to chuck another bit on, but it's Friday. I've had a long week plastering, quite a big job. And to be honest, I'm just going to get a coffee. <laughs> I've got that section on. I'm going to get a coffee, get some food, because I'm pretty hungry. It's only early, but I'm still hungry. So I'm going to nip out, get some food, and then come back and see how it's settled. So I've also put a bit of accelerator in it. It was actually cold this morning. I thought it was going to be cold for the rest of the day, but it's starting to get quite warm where i am where the sun's hitting me so i'm gonna get some food get a coffee and then see how it sits when i get back if it's all right then i'll get the other section on if it's not then um we'll show you the next part but yeah it's friday i'm gonna treat myself to a little break <laughs> i'll see you in a bit okay so i've waited a little bit i had to grab some lunch in the end i put a bit of accelerator in the beginning of this because it's winter it's taken up quite well so I've already started doing the floating stage. So the floating basically requires you using this. This is a float, this is a plastic float. This is a Rafina diamond back float. So usually a lot of people either use wooden or it's a PU adhesive kind of float. This is a plastic based one. It's very, very nice float to use actually. But basically what we're doing now is compressing the render. Once you've ruled the render, it leaves it quite gritty. It opens it up and it doesn't look great. So let me show you. So this is the difference. You've got this smooth section here compared to this, which is quite rough. This is a smooth. And basically all you do is you grab your float, you hold it flat to the render. So this, it's not ridged, it's not got an angle. You hold it flat. And then with circular motions, you rub the render up. And then, if you catch it at the right time, it'll start to close in the pause, and it'll start getting it smooth. So, what you want is when you push your fingers in, it doesn't leave any fingerprints. It doesn't push in. You want a, you want it to be slightly spongy, not completely solid, and you want a little bit of moisture in the render. But when you when you leave, when you draw your finger across, you can leave a detail. It will pull a bit of the top coat off but not too much. So what you're seeing there, it's a perfect time to be um, floating your render. So. Mm. 
And what this process does, what this process does is it closes it up, but it also takes any high spots of the render. If you've got any high spots or ridges, it'll take that back and it'll also allow you to fill any low spots. So I keep the water brush with me, clean the float, keep adding moisture to it. If it's dry, add moisture. It just brings it back. So let me show you, I've got a low spot here. Let me show you what happens. I've wetted the float up. This is an area, let me move out of the shadow. You can see it's, it's not really. So when you float it, some areas are being filled in, but that isn't. So what you want to do, grab your tub. This is the same render I was using before, same mix. Just got some left over. Put a bit on the edge of your float. Fill it in. See now? It's completely flat. It's gone. So that's what we're doing here. We're filling any low spots, but it's also taking any ridges or high spots off. Again, section there where the render's pulled, put it on. And the dark art's floating is just catching it at the right time. It's catching the render at the right point. Another big hole there. Fill it in. and then rub it in. Also, if you see any stones in the mix, you want to take them out. That sometimes happen. It can be in the bulk bag, it can be in the sand. It's quite a long area there. Float around it. And then it might mean that you might have to add something in. But generally, look, that's, that's getting floated. See that section there? Got quite a bit of a ridge. that's what the floating stage is about taking off any high spots and filling lows we can see here the tops are quite bare i'm going to add some rendering float that in and then eventually cut it back so that is a floating process crack on with that and see it in action Okay, so we're at the final stage of rendering. If you've come this far, you've done well. This is the easiest part. This is called sponging. And all you have to do is, once it's been floated, is you want to get a final finish. Um, and you just bring in, basically bring in the sand to the surface, which gives it that nice, smooth, sandy look that you traditionally see in sand cement render. All I'm using is a jumbo sponge. I've dipped it in water. You drench all the water out of it, so you really... You, drench it from the water you just clean it out make sure there's nothing in there dry it off and then all you're doing with small circular motions is you're just rubbing the render up 
Again, just like the float, you hold the sponge flat to the render and almost with no pressure, you're just rubbing up the render. Now, because it's been floated, you've still got a little bit of moisture in there because when you do the floating process, it brings the moisture to the front. So all you're doing with small, gentle circular motions, you're just rubbing up and you're closing in the pores further and that'll close in any areas that are still a bit open which smooths off the render and it also brings the sand to the surface as we call it aggregate and it gives you that nice sandy look now word and the a word of uh, caution the firmer you are with your strokes and with your rubs the more you'll see lines so you really want to be gentle the idea is not to see any lines at all yet because the harder you sponge it this, um, the more you'll see the sponge marks in the render it, they will show through. So you just want to be really gentle with this, you know, really caress the wall. I mean, it sounds a bit pervy, but you want to be gentle at this point because it's so easy to sponge it, but it's so easy at the same time to do it wrong. So you don't want to put any pressure on it and keep cleaning your sponge. You don't want any of that aggregate to stick to your sponge. I keep dipping it in the water, cleaning the sponge out as so, and then drenching the water out of the sponge again, and then clenching it out make sure there's nothing left behind you almost ideally want a dry sponge what i've done is i ran a straight edge along the whole top of that wall and i've floated to it that's why that big uh, blocks at the top it's holding the straight edge down so i've rendered to the straight edge there's going to be coping stones on top so all i'm doing now is cleaning off the edges which is giving me a nice straight edge to work to so when the coping stones go on render won't be going everywhere it won't be all over the place they've got a nice line to work to but you can see now the wall is looking uniform. It looks like one solid slab. And that's because the render pulls the whole wall together. It gives it that uniform complexion. Gives it that uniform look. And it allows you to get that lovely finish that you're after in sand cement render. So that's it. You want a dry sponge. Nice gentle grip. And slow circular motions. The smaller the motions... Um, the less detailed it is but you can go big but again just don't push on the render hard that's all I can say on this dry sponge gentle touch and you'll go far and that is literally all it is to rendering so we've put the beads on we've mixed it we've applied the scratch coat and then we've waited you would typically wait a day at least next day hose the wall down if it's looking dry apply your top coat with render and then you rule it float it and then sponge it so that's the whole process on how to render a wall and finishing with a sponge nice and easy if you're at this stage it's the easiest part and probably the nicest most satisfying stage of rendering because not only is it over but you've got a lovely wall to look at so that's it that concludes masterclass let's let's have a look how it got out and that is how you render a wall that's the full process mapped out i'm going to be continuing on this job um I've just done this top coat because of the coping stones. I've actually still got a lot of prep to do. And since the sun is hitting right on us, I'm going to carry on scratching, I think. Uh, it's still quite early considering, but that did set quite fast. The sun's been hitting full on it. Got a little bit of wind. So it's perfect conditions for it going off. But we're coming to midday. And I don't really fancy doing another hit like that in the direct sun. <laughs> So I'm going to carry on scratching around the backs, but that is the full process on how to render a wall. If you like this video, please hit the like button and please subscribe to the channel.